Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Aditya Kumar Singh. I am an automation consultant in test automation competency, and I welcome all of you to our code camp session on clean code in test automation, differentiating between the good and the bad. So before moving ahead in the session and going through all the agenda points and uh, getting over with this code camp, let's talk about why we are talking about this clean code in the test automation. So as a developer and the testers, we are clearly aware about the writing clean and maintainable code, which is very essential. However, when it comes to the test automation, this principle becomes, I will say, even more critical. Clean code in the test automation not only ensures our tests are reliable and easy to understand, but also enhances our robustness, quickly identify and fix the issues, collaborate with the team, collaboration with the team members, and adapt to our challenging requirements. So these were the few points to, that uh, highlights that why this topic is important and why we should do means like discuss about it, have a discussion on the code, means like have a session on this. Now I will go through the agenda points. So our agenda points of today are <clears throat> introduction, then comes the clean testing, arrange act assert, then comes the characteristics, then comes the characteristics of the good and the bad test automation. I hope my screen is visible, right? Because it seems to be just a second, guys. My screen yeah, got freezed. Yes, just a second. My screen got freezed. Sorry for the delays, guys. Yes. So yeah, and the means like talking about the agenda. So throughout this session, we will explore the importance of the clean code in the test automation means like understanding why the clean code is crucial and the impact it has on the overall quality maintainability of our automated test, which we'll be covering in our introduction as an introduction. Then comes the clean testing, which is uh, the AAA pattern, which is arrange, act and assert. Implementing the AAA pattern to structure our test clearly ensuring each test has a distinct set up so that they are distinct from each other action and the assertion phase, which enhances the readability and maintainability. Then talking about the characteristics, which will be distinguishing between the good and the bad test automation code, how you can identify the bad test automation code and uh, improve it to make it uh, similar to the good test automation code. So there will be a clear distinction. Then comes the key principles of the clean code, like learning about the key concept principles from the foundation of the clean code in that that we can make use in the test automation then comes the best practices like discovering the practical tips and the design patterns that help us write clean efficient and scalable test automation script so all these three we will be covering in our today's agenda now moving ahead so in the introduction so writing clean code is paramount for ensuring that tests are effective maintainable and reliable Clean code is not just a stylistic preference. I will say it is a fundamental aspect of creating tests that are effective, clear, straightforward code, reduces the risk of the error and misinterpretation. Means like uh, by looking at the code itself, we can derive like what it is going to perform before even we see the execution of that code. Then the maintainable as uh, application evolve test needs to be updated to reflect the changes. Clean, well structured code make this process easier and less prone error prone then the reliability reliable test uh, consistently produce the same results which is crucial for detecting the issues in the application rather than the test now moving to the next point when the code is clean and well organized well organized the team members can quickly grasp what each test done how it does it and why 
efficient well written test run faster and consume fewer resources fewer resources the execute executable resources making the test suite more efficient and less of the bottleneck in the development pipeline now moving okay then moving to the next one does anyone have a query okay moving to the next one the focus will be on differentiating between good and bad practices in the test automation so keeping test and short focused using i can say the using meaningful names for the test met methods and the variables are some of the good practices while writing the overly or we can say complex test duplicating code across the multiple test creating independent test that must run in a specific orders are some of the bad practices now the last point by examining these distinctions we aim to promote that lead the best practices that leads to more efficient and robust automated testing so the, about the last point we can say that encouraging the adoption of the techniques that are laid down for the clean code and the patterns that lead to the maintainable and reliable test code is a must among the team members okay now moving ahead now talking about the clean testing so now comes the concept of the clean testing it is a methodology in the test automation that emphasizes writing clear and readable and maintainable test by following a structured pattern that is known as arrange act and assert triple a we can also say if we break down this statement the test should be straight forward and easy to understand anyone reading the test should quickly grasp what it is testing and why and readability is also the key to maintainability clean test use descriptive name consistent formatting and logical structure consistent formatting in the sense means like since we are following the camel case naming convention then we will we should stick to that it it, it should not be the mixture of camel case snake uh, naming con snake case and uh, capital lower case all these kind of things they should not be a mixture then maintainable test maintainable test are modular use reusable components and avoid hard coding values that may change over time which highlights our importance of having the parameterized test values and the reusability and at last the clean code a clean test is simple direct and not cluttered with unnecessary steps or information they focus on the essential elements required to verify the functionality avoiding excessive setup or redundant assertion that do not add value so does anyone have any question so far okay then moving ahead now we will be going through the this layer of the triple a pattern that is arrange act and assert starting with the arrange now in the first line of the triple a pattern we have the arrange and if we explain the arrange based on the sample code provided just below so if we look into this statement that driver equals to new chrome driver here we are initializing an instance of the chrome driver class which is a crucial object for our selenium web driver test this object allows us to interact with the chrome browser and perform actions such as opening web pages or other browser actions like clicking on the elements and entering the input field in the input forms now for setting up the data if we look at the driver.get and the base url that we have used as a sample and its parameter here we are setting up the initial state for our test means like uh, our when the automated browser window will be open we will be navigating to that url mentioned in that driver.get this ensures that when our test run they start from the correct url so the, all these kind of things we need to do in the beginning which is arrange means like we are arranging the things to perform any set of actions now in the provided code we have not explicitly shown the mocking of the dependencies like the database injection or the network calling to simulate the behavior of the external systems or the services that our test interact with because uh, our motive was to keep the sample code as simple as simple for our audience so this was all about the arrange now we will move ahead to our act now in the act phase you perform the action that you want to test and if we look on the again on the provided sample code where we have the test login method the act phase involves performing actions that simulate a user trying to log in in the application for like if we look into the specific field like in the act for the username field dot send keys and as a parameter we have a parameter right test constant which is test user by calling the send keys method on the username field element which is a web element and we are programmatically entering the username and subsequently the password in the next line now for login button dot click the click method uh, triggers the login process this actions sorry 
this action sends the filled in credentials to the server for authentication purposes to make sure that the details provided are correct or not and initiating the test primary functionality so this test login method is basically designed for the login functionality only and uh, these actions are directly related to the functionality being tested it means like uh, as the name of the method itself says that we are going to test the login functionality and by clearly separating these action in the act phase we make the test easier to understand maintain and debug if in future it get failed any question so far okay then now we have the in the last which is assert phase which is the last part of the triple a pattern where we just verify the outcome which is as expected which is laid down in our scripting or not in the below provided if we again look into the below provided uh, sample test login method the asset phase involves verifying that the login was successful by checking the presence and content of the welcome message as it is written here welcome message is not displayed asset dot asset true so the asset so if we talk about the hard assertion and soft assertion the, we have two categories so asset comes in the hard assertion means like uh, if the condition laid down for this asset is not met then the test execution will stop there itself it will not proceed whereas if we talk about the soft assertion verify and uh, if it condition is not met then the test execution will not stop it will continue on the next conditions or the next uh, scripting written ahead of that assertion now in this sample code we have not covered uh, the verify but we do have covered the hard assertion which is assert so assert dot assert true where this hard assertion checks if the welcome message element is displayed on the web page or not and if it is not then the message which is a login field welcome message and not displayed will be printed to the console now similarly at the last uh, assert dot assert equals where this hard assertion checks if the text of the welcome message web element matches the expected test as written on the web page means like uh, the locator mentioned in the welcome message is same as the text that we have provided welcome comma test user if these text does not match then the assertion will fail so this was all about assert and these all substitute means like con contribute to our triple a pattern clean testing so we have completed our one agenda point does anyone have any question okay now we will be talking about the characteristics of the good automation code now as we discussed in the beginning good automation code is essential for ensuring the reliability efficiency and maintainability in an automated process here we have laid down some key characteristics of the well written automation code now starting with the readability clear and concise the code should be easy to read and understand yes that is the code should be straight forward and easy to read like i just clear means like a just now mention that uh, the by reading the code itself we should be able to understand like what the code is going to perform then the consistent naming convention adopting a consistent style for naming convention naming variables function and classes that is use a uniform style for naming convention or oh, sorry naming variables function and classes as in earlier example sample code we witnessed the test login method so all those were following us uni means like a consistent style for naming conventions there was not mixture like upper case lower case snake case camel case there was not a mixture they were all following a uni consistent then comes the comments appropriate comments help others and also our future self to understand the code functionality and uh, intent that is uh, using the appropriate comments to clarify the code functionality and intent then uh, next point modularity so function and modules breaking down the code into the reusable function and module make it easier to manage now dividing the code into the reusable components such as function and modules to enhance manageability that what it is means so for example like uh, creating a login functionality instead of repeating those login steps for each uh, test scenario that we are going to cover in our test suite that should not happen means like uh, we should create a unique means like not unique uh, for what we can say a single login method functionality and we should call that login function in each of our test scenarios where we are required to login into the web application then comes the single responsibility each function or module should have a single well defined rep responsibility and show that means like it means that each function or module handles only one specific task there should not be that we are hand means like in that like taking the example of the test login method itself it should not be that we are login we are also writing the script for login functionality then also we are making sure that we are on the home page and we are now setting the different navigation bar on the home page so it should not be the scenario 
instead we should make the function of the module that handle the specific task only now comes the flexibility and configurability configurable parameters using configuration files or environment variables allow the code to be easily adapted to different environment or use cases without modifying the code base so it simply means that uh, ensure the code can easily seamlessly transition between the different environments means like we don't have to create a separate code for our testing test environment separate code for our staging environment separate code for our production environment it these kind of scenarios should not occur by means like by making use of the configurable parameters leveraging them we should make sure that our test script is consistent all through our test environment and production environment then comes the extensibility the code should be designed to accommodate the future changes or additional feature with minimal modification so it simply means like implementing a flex flexible architecture allows the tester to also add the new test cases in the future means like uh, suppose uh, taking the example again suppose in our web application now in the future we came up okay let's add a new navigation bar now for that purpose alone now our home page will having a new navigation assertion so the scenario it should not be that we have to refactor or reformat our existing test script that we have written down instead we can update our existing one or integrate a new test scenario about that particular new navigation that was introduced that is introduced now comes the error handling and logging error handling proper and uh, <clears throat> error handling mechanism should be in place to gracefully handle exception and errors without crashing that uh, that simply means like uh, handling exception smoothly to prevent the test crashes means like uh, there should be the proper uh, try catch block and proper web driver exceptions the no, the element not found exception such kind of exception should be in place like uh, so that it does not help means like it does not make our test script to fail in the during the execution then the logging implementing the logging helps in debugging and providing insights into the code execution flow yes then uh, means like our test script should also be coupled with logging for uh, debugging insights also which will also help us in debugging like what is wrong here so this was some of the key characteristics now moving ahead to some of the other key characteristics that is compliance and the standards now adherence to the standards following industry industry standards and best practices for coding ensures that the automation code is reliable and interoperable so it simply means like uh, conforming to the industry standards and coding best practices ensures the reliable and interoperable automation code so for example means like uh, we have a standard like a uh, we have the different principles like dry do not repeat yourself and keep it simple so these all kind of industry standards should be followed and to make sure that our test script is reliable and interoperable between each other then comes the code reviews so regular code reviews help identify issue early and improve the overall quality of code so it simply means like regular peer reviews facilitate early issue detection and enhance the overall quality code quality as well means like it's better to find those issues early during the manual verification manual means like peer reviews before merging those code in our main code base then comes the security the secure practices following the best security practices such as avoiding hard coded credential using secure connection protects against the vulnerabilities so it simply means like adhering to the best security practices like avoiding the hard coded credentials and utilizing the secure connection safeguard against the vulnerabilities then comes the input validation validating input to ensure that the code handle an expected or malicious data appropriately validating input uh, ensures that robust handling of the unexpected or malicious data means like in in the scenarios of validating the form form data and ensuring the code uh, reliability and security so that we make sure that there there is no sql injection or other kind of uh, secure socket layer issues we can say then comes the scalability efficient algorithms writing efficient algorithm ensures that the code can handle increasing amounts of the data or complexity without significant performance degradation so it simply means like uh, implementing the efficient test execution strategies ensuring that the automated test can handle the larger test suite or or the complex test suite without significant slowdowns in the execution executable resources or the unnecessary means like we can avoid all these kind of scenarios by minimizing or completely removing those uh, redundant action that is not required or unnecessary explicit weights then comes the parallelization where possible enabling the parallel execution of the task can improve the performance so it simply means like utilizing the test frameworks or the tools that support the parallel execution 
allowing the test to run concurrently simultaneously across the multiple environment or the devices reducing the overall test execution time so these were all our, about our characteristics of the good automation code so does anyone have question here because uh, we will be now moving to our bad automation code okay then comes the characteristics of the bad automation code the bad automation code can lead to inefficiencies difficulty in maintenance potential failures in the automated process and uh, here are some of the key characteristics of the bad poor automation code that we have laid down so starting with the poor readability unclear naming the using the non descriptive variables and function name that do not convey their purpose so it simply means like uh, you are naming your test case or the test method like test for example test underscore one or a variable x like we used to do during our school days so instead of using those names we should make use of the descriptive names like test underscore login successful it is clearly highlighting that in this particular method we are now going to log in successfully or similar subsequently we can also create test login underscore unsuccessful here we will be validating the login functionality with uh, invalid credentials so such type of naming convention should be followed then comes the inconsistent style like uh, mentioned earlier inconsistent uh, naming convention and coding style lead to the confusion and difficulty in following the code so for example mixing the camel case and snake case naming convention or inconsistent identification spacing throughout the and spacing throughout the test scripts those kind of uh, errors or mistakes should be avoided to make sure that our test uh, means like these are some of the characteristics of the bad automation code lack of the comment absence of the comments or documentation making it difficult to understand the code intent and functionality so code so comments are means like comments are required but it should not also be the scenario that we are writing down the comments for each line that we have introduced in our test script no it it is means like it is directly pointing to the bad comment scenario it should be avoided it should means like the comment should be most at most should be highlighting for the test method that is what it is going to be performing then failing also also failing to include those comment explaining the means like which might explain the purpose of the each test case leading to the ambiguity or and potential misunderstanding so that's why it leads to the bad automation code now comes the monolithic structure now the lack of the modularity we are writing the large monolithic block of code without breaking them down into the smaller reusable function or modules so it simply means like writing a single test script that contains all the test cases all the action without organizing them into the separate test method or the test function or the modules just like i would say that means like suppose let's take the example of the uh, e-commerce web application here so now as we know that uh, e-commerce web application flow is very generic that we log in into the e-commerce website web application then we make any query means like we look for any specific product we add that product to the cart and then uh, we proceed to the checkout in the checkout during the checkout we fill out the basic details the address and the and the payment option that we are going to select and after that we confirm the order so all these flow instead of writing all means like instead of covering all these uh, test validation flow in particular method in one single method we should divide these in the particular pages if we are following the page object model or in separate separate test methods then comes the multiple responsibility functions or modules that handle the multiple tasks making them complex and difficult to understand or reuse so it simply means like uh, the test function that both logs into the website like just as mentioned that both log in into the website and perform validation check on the user data also making sure that whether the details are provided were correct or not it makes it challenging to understand and modify the code means like if a test method has multiple responsibility then it also means like uh, makes it makes it difficult to modularize when the future upgradation of the web application is introduced then comes the redundancy code duplication repeating the same code in multiple places instead of abstracting the common functionality into the reusable component so here we simply means like that is that is that simply means like copying and pasting the login step that is entering the username and password clicking the login button into every test case instead of creating a reusable login function or module so by this we can means like ignore the redundancy or code duplication weak error handling no error handling failing to handle the potential errors or exceptions which can cause the automation to crash crash unexpectedly so it simply means like failing to include the try catch block 
to handle the potential exceptions such as like uh, since we are following the selenium with java so in during this uh, code camp session so taking some ex exception from that the we have some uh, exception to name few like element not found or timeout exceptions so these kind of errors might arise during the test execution and if we don't have any proper try catch block then uh, it will lead to the uh, the we can say the test execution disruption which will contribute to the no error, error handling then comes the poor logging inadequate or absent logging make, making it hard to diagnose the issues or understand the code execution flow so it simply means like failing to log the critical events warnings or the error during the test execution and uh, hindering the troubleshooting efforts and making it difficult to identify the root cause of the failure so without any poor logging we will not be able to identify like what is causing the test uh, execution to disrupt so these are some of the characteristics of the bad automation code now any question so far does anyone have i hope uh, i am audible right uh, can anyone confirm yeah you are yes sir okay, okay. then moving ahead to some of the other bad characteristics of the bad automation code the comes the non adherence to the standards now the ignoring the best practices not following the industry best practices and coding standard leading to the lower quality and less reliable code that is writing the test script without following the naming convention not utilizing uh, we can say the page object model which is a design pattern for the web automation or neglecting to use the version control system like the git so that our teams can collaborate uh, effectively and together so all these kind of uh, ignoring the best practices contribute to the bad automation code then comes the no code reviews skipping code reviews missing out on the opportunities to catch issues early and improve the code quality so it simply means like skipping the peer reviews of the test script before merging them into the main code base so if there is no manual analysis of the code or the peer review then and we are directly means like directly merging them into the main code base then it will lead to the undetected bugs or the readability issues or also some of the violation of the coding standards so all these can be avoided with the proper peer review then comes the security vulnerabilities hard coded credentials storing sensitive information like credential directly in the code which can be a major security risk that is uh, embedding the login credentials within the test script instead of using the secure methods like environment variables dot env file or encrypted storage without all making use of these proper steps we might be exposing our hard coded uh, means like not hard coded we might be exposing our user valid user credentials during our test automation code then comes the lack of input validation failing to validate inputs making the code vulnerable to injection attacks and other security issues now this is something kind of specific so failing to sanitize the user input in the web forms means like we have the form application in the web application itself so in those input field if we are allowing the malicious input to exploit with the vulnerabilities like sql injection or the cross site scripting so all these kind of uh, input validation should be avoided oh sorry input validation should be introduced and the hard coding and inflexibility hard coded values using the hard coded values for configuration making the code less flexible and harder to adapt to the different environment so it simply means like specifying the urls timeouts or the file path directly in the test script rather than storing them in the configuration file or making use of the environment variables so this hard coded value is somewhat similar to the hard coded credentials only then comes the non configurable lack of configurable parameters requiring the code changes for different use cases or the environments so now we we might be having a scenario that the, the test scripts that rely on the hard coded values without providing them the option to customize for each browser configuration or the environment in which we are might be running our test scripts so all these kind of uh, what we can say the situation can arise if our test script our parameters or the test data are not configured in a form of the parameterization so all these were our characteristics of the bad automation code now we will be learning means like going through our the key 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 clean code principle in the test automation so in the first we have the single responsibility principle so this principle states that a class or module should have only one reason to change that is each test case or the test suite should have only a single responsibility focusing that to also on the specific piece of the functionality for example uh, just taking again the login test case should only validate the login process and not also include the unrelated action like navigating on the other pages after the successful login or performing the user registration 
then the ease of maintenance means like it helps in maintaining the test as any change in the feature being tested should only require changes in the one place so by adhering to the single responsibility principle the test automation become test automation code become easier to maintain as changes in the functionality being tested only necessitate modification in the one place so means like suppose in the login page there is one more functionality added that is to sign in also if you are means like if you are the first user or if you don't know if you are the first user so but uh, we were so far were covering only the login functionality that is to by providing the input details username and the password and just clicking on the login button so with this uh, single responsibility principle now we can also introduce the validation of the sign in functionality as well so any questions so far okay then moving ahead then comes the our the next principle that is open close principle so in the open close principle suggests that the software entities classes function etc should be open for extension but closed for the modification in test automation this could mean that uh, our test cases should be designed in a way that allows for easy extension adding a new scenario or the new test cases <clears throat> without modifying the existing ones now with open and closed principle we can say that uh, test automation artifacts such as the test cases or the test framework should be designed to allow for the easy extension means like adding a new feature or the test case that we just uh, is like discussed about without requiring the modification to the existing one for example implementing a test framework using a modular architecture where a new test case can be added by creating new modules or classes that extend those existing functionality without needing to modify the core framework logic then talking about the abstraction and design pattern means like what all abstraction and design pattern we have means like we can achieve the open close principle through the proper abstraction and uh, utilization of the design patterns like the page object model so using the page object model to abstract the web page elements and the action allowing the test cases to interact with the pages through the high level method without needing to know the underlying implementation details which means like proper complete abstraction this enables uh, every uh, easy addition of the new test cases without modifying the existing one as long as the page structure remains the same so this was about the open close principle does anyone have any question okay then comes the next principle which is uh, first we can as pronounced but uh, first stand for the fast isolated repeatable self validating and timely so in the first we have the test should execute quickly to provide the rapid feedback yes yeah, isolated independent slash independent test should not depend on each other each test should be able to run independently then the repeatable test should produce the same result every time they are run then the self validating test should have a boolean output they should pass or fail clearly then the timely the test should be written timely ideally before the code they are testing is implemented following a test driven development so now if we go through one by one through each point so in the first we were means like we mean just simply means that the test execution should be fast to provide the rapid feedback to the developers and the testers about the upgradation or the changes required means like we can avoid means like uh, we can avoid the unnecessary delays such as the excessive usage of the explicit wait or making use of the redundant action in the test script which is are not required at all to ensure the swift execution of the complete test suite then the isolated uh, independent test should not rely on each other and should not be able and should be able to run independently for example is ensuring that each test set up its own precondition and does not rely on the other test method left by the previous test <clears throat> then the repeatable test should produce the consistent result every time they are run so it simply means like uh, using the static uh, test data or setting up the predictable test environment without uh, to ensure the consistent outcomes i hope it makes sense means like uh, you making use of the test data or setting up any kind of a test environment pre environment to ensure the existing means like consistent outcomes throughout the the execution of the test script then comes the self validating test should have a clear pass or fail outcome means like a uh, test should have a boolean output as well means like you can make use of the assertion statements to validate expected outcomes and automate the pass fail scenarios means like determination <clears throat> then at the last we have the timely which uh, signifies to the test driven development so following a test driven development approach where tests are written first before the corresponding uh, code is written ensuring that the comprehensive test coverage from the 
from the web application that we are going to test. So this was about our first principle. Then next comes the single level of the abstraction principle. So this principle states that there should not be multiple level of abstraction within a function or the method. In test automation, this simply means that the test method should have a single level of the abstraction, making them easier to read and understand. So with single level of the abstraction principle, we simply means that test method should maintain a consistent level of the abstraction, avoiding multiple layer of the complexity within a single function or the method test method itself. So it again signifies to the single responsibility principle means like where each test method should focus on a specific level of detail, avoiding mixing high level action with the low level implementation details. Then comes the clarity and readability. By adhering to the single level abstraction principle, the test methods become easier to read and understand. For example, breaking down the complex test scenarios into the smaller, more focused methods, each specific test scenario or method for a specific action or assertion itself become responsible. This improves the maintainability of the test code base, entire test code base as well. So this was from our single level of abstraction principle. Now moving ahead to our dependency injection principle. This principle promotes injecting dependency into a class rather than creating them internally. In test automation, this allows for easier testing by enabling the injection of the mock objects or test double to isolate the component under the test. So with dependency injection principle, we simply means that a class or the component from the external sources should be provided rather than creating internally. It's like any kind of dependency should be fetched from external sources rather than being created internally, rather than instantiating a database connection object. Means like we are taking an example of the database connection as a dependency within a class, pass that connection string or the object as a parameter to the class construct, means like test constructor or the method. Then uh, Dependency injection facilitate the easier testing by allowing the mock objects or test double to be injected in the place of the real dependency. So to explain this particular thing, let's talk about some real world example like uh, or talking about the in the context of the SEO Bureau C authentication flow, where the dependency injection principle can be applied when integrating the SEO Bureau C authentication into a web application test automation framework. During the test automation, we can mock that entire SEO B2C flow so that uh, we don't have to provide the 2FA during the Microsoft login and the implementation of the authentication module. Those all things can be mocked and instead of using the actual SEO B2C flow as well as the endpoints. So this was about dependency injection principle. So it was also about our last principle. Does anyone have any question? Okay. Now comes the best practices in the test automation, the practical approach that we will be now going through. So starting with the descriptive naming. So where we will see the usage of the descriptive and consistent name for the test cases, methods and the variable. Then comes the small and focused test where we will see how to keep test case focused on testing a single piece of functionality to enhance the clarity, maintainability and uh, other things. Where And then comes the page object model where we will see the implementation of the page object model to abstract the web page elements and the action promoting the readability and the reusability, which is the main part. Then comes the parameterized value. So where we will see the usage of the parameterization to dynamically supply the test data and configuration, improving the test coverage and versatility. This was all in parameterized web values we will see. And the assertion now in this, uh, we will see the inclusion of the meaningful assertion to validate the expected outcomes and ensure that the test reliable and is a self validated itself. Then comes the weights. So where we will see main means like we will go through the usage of the appropriate weights to synchronize the test execution with the application behavior and enhancing the test stability and reliability, stability and reliability. Then it, finally, we have the logging and reporting where we will see implementation of the logging and reporting mechanism to capture the relevant information and provide the insight into the test execution debugging and as well as the results that we are logging. So this all we will be going through one by one. So at the first we have the descriptive naming, usage of the descriptive naming. In the test automation, choose the descriptive name for the classes, methods and variables that convey their purpose. And now if we look into this sample code, which is all about login page test class, so the class login page test and the method login with valid credential underscore should succeed, have a descriptive name that clearly convey their purpose like what they are going to be performing. The class name itself indicates that it contains the test related to the login page 
while the method itself uh, describe that it is going to validate the login validate the login functionality with the valid user credentials so by means like uh, by going through the sample code we can may we can now have a clear idea about how to make use of the descriptive naming in our best practices for the test automation code so does anyone have any question okay then the next practices we have the keeping test small and focused which also highlights to the single responsibility principle so in the test automation each test should focus on testing a single functionality or a scenario only now again we have some sample code listed below okay listed the displayed below so here means like on the left side we have the sample code that test the validation of the login page and on the right side we have the sample code that test the validation of the home page and also they are also following the means like uh, the aaa pattern arrange act assert so if we go through these uh, sample code in the provided sample code each test method focuses on a specific aspect only means like in the login page itself we can see that it is all, all about login itself it is not going to perform any other action it except the login itself then on the right side if we may then then on then on the right side we if we look into the sample code of the home page it to make sure that we are just validating the home page itself so this all these things clearly ensure that test remain focused on the individual functionality making them easy to understand and maintain also in future if we if we need one means like if uh, one page undergoes any upgradation then the subsequent test script will require minimal or no change at all so all these kind of things needs to be taken care of so this was about uh, keeping the test small and focused now we will move ahead to our next best practices which is uh, making usage or use of the batch object model so in the test automation we encapsulate the web elements and the action into the page objects to promote the reusability and maintainability so again for this example we have the sample code below we have the login page class so in this provided login page class we can see the web element username input and password input and login button as well as the login action are encapsulated within the login page class itself so by encapsulating the login functionality into a page object it can be reused across the other test scenarios and in the test suite itself as a whole so that uh, we don't have to be in a situation that we are reiterating or reuse it means like creating a duplicacy of the login test script itself which is ultimately reducing the duplication itself and then subsequently changes to the login process means like uh, changes to the login process such as updating the element locators or modifying the login logic can be made in a single page single place itself within the login page class itself so that uh, maintenance so that it contributes to the easy maintenance and easy man management of the entire test automation code does anyone have any question Okay. Then comes the avoiding the hard coding values. So in test automation, making use of the configuration file or constant to store the test data and configuration settings. For example, again now on the left side we have a test constant class where we have laid down the several constant and are associated with its value. Then on the right side we have the login page class again, and instead of hard coding the username and the password itself. we are making use of the constants that we have introduced in our test constant class so by making by following this approach we can avoid making use of the hard coding values in the test script itself so any question i hope my screen is visible and or i am audible enough right Yes. Okay. Okay. Then comes the next practice, which is keeping assertion clear and concise. In the test automation, using the meaningful messages and assertion to understand the failure easily. Now, again, on the left side, we have the means like we have specifying, highlighting the particular single assertion, which is assert equal, which is again a hard assertion. Login successful, where we are means like fetching the title. So as we have. as we are aware to the html content so in the html content we also have a title html where we means like once uh, 
the page, web page is loaded successfully that title used to display in place of the url so that uh, title we are now going to validate in the login successful as a login successful so the session message the page title should be a dashboard after the successful login in our uh, login with the valid credential underscore should succeed method provide the context about what is being verified by including a clear assertion message just like we have introduced in the name in the form of the page title should be a dashboard after successful login failures can easily be understood during if the test execution got disrupted so it contributes our contributes to the effective troubleshooting and debugging then the assertion also ensures that the page after the successful login matches the expected value that we have provided which is dashboard itself so by following this approach we can make sure that our session are clear and concise which also help us in debugging and also proper logging is there then moving to the next practice which is about handling the weights properly so in test automation using the explicit and implicit weights both to handle the synchronization issues so the difference between explicit and implicit weight is that implicit weights are defined at the root means like at the class level and they need to be defined at only once and it will be applicable to all the web elements defined in that class and the explicit weight means like explicit weight are introduced means like are used when you want to explicitly weight weight for any specific web element like in the sample code you can see there is a explicit weight defined expected condition dot visibility of element located by dot id and in the id we have provided a web element element id and similarly in the right side we have the setup method so in this setup method a web driver weight instance is created which is all about our implicit weight we all and the duration is 10 second which applies to all the elements in the web driver by using the both explicit and implicit weight the synchronization issues such as the element visibility or the web page not able to load properly are handled effectively so that our test script don't get uh, means like not test script so that our test execution don't get disrupted uh, in between because of the failure of not finding that web element on that web page successfully also all these also this practice also contributes to our test stability and stability and reliability so it was all about handling weight properly any question okay let me know if you guys have any question <clears throat> then comes the parameterizing the test so in the test automation using the parameterize to run test with different data set for example again we have the sample code in the on the left side we have making use of the data provider name login data which is defined to supply the different sets of the username password pairs password pairs for testing and on the right side we have the login with valid condition underscore should succeed method as well as navigate to home page underscore after successful login method these all are parameterized allowing them to be executed with a different combination of username and password so this parameterization enable the testing multiple scenarios efficiently enhancing their test coverage and versatility and also make sure that our test scripts are reliable for each kind of the test data set of the test data that we provide that we feed to our test script during the test execution so this was all about parameterizing test any question okay then comes the implementing logging and reporting so in test automation using the logging framework like log 4j package or slf 4j to log informative message for debugging utilizing the reporting tools like extend report or test ng report for generating the comprehensive test report now again on the left side informative messages are logged using a log 4j package to track the progress of the test execution and to debug any issues if any arises during the test execution then then on the right side we have the if we look at the opening stator statement of the method login with valid credentials we are creating a test instance in the extent report with a descriptive name including the correct username current sorry not correct current username being tested subsequently the if we look at the next line log there is a logging and we are logging an information message indicating the start of the login test with the current username and this entire sample code snippet demonstrate how we can make use of the logging and reporting mechanism to document the test execution process after the test execution and outcomes for the better understanding and debugging so does anyone have any question because this is the last uh, practice best practices and last agenda point as well okay 
so now moving ahead now we will be looking at our demo so for the demo we have covered a uh, just a second Okay, just a second, guys. <clears throat> Is my screen visible again? Yes. Okay. So for this demo, we we will be showcasing the principles that we have just gone through in our test automation core. It's like the different kind of principle, single responsibility principle, and uh, our open close principle so for means like uh, taking the time with the amount of the time that we have left with now so i will go through only the, the single principle which will be the single responsibility principle so means like going through again the what does the single responsibility principle means that every class should have a single responsibility there should never be more than one reason for a class to change so now as you can see i'm currently standing on my intellij id and the project structure is uh, intellij itself and this is the directory structure where we uh, we have the separate folders for the separate uh, principles that we might be that we will be that we be, okay then uh, we we will be means like as i told that we will be going through the single responsibility principle so now for this uh, i have a means like a greater division of uh, both the bad and the good so this example the single responsibility example that i'm going to showcase is uh, derived from the tic tac toe game the bad example, the bad example itself, the bad example directory that you can see here itself is providing a generic board class that does the board related thing, entire thing. It stores the values of the sport spots on the board in the tic-tac-toe game, return the board row and print the board out to the screen in the console. On the surface, everything seems related to the real world board object, but the single responsibility principle tell us that this class should not be handling too many responsibilities. It means like this class alone is handling the entire tic-tac-toe game which should not be as according to the single responsibility principle then subsequently we have created a directory in the code which is all about the means like uh, the single responsibility principle that is being laid down here in these directory in these files so considering the board class and the good directory so the only thing it is responsible is for knowing the value of its spots means like how many spots are there in the tic-tac-toe game it is in entirely unconcerned with how those spots are being manipulated as per the rule of our tic-tac-toe game, rows, columns, diagonals, or uh, display to the user in a console. The Similarly, the other two class, board presenter and board shaper classes are similarly focused on specific task only, which is as their names specify. And uh, board shaper object, board shaper objects are initialized with only a size here they don't need the whole board because they are coming from the other classes now talking about this board class again so in the board class we have the size and integer representing the size of the board and the array list of the strings representing the sports on the board then the we have the constructor here as a board and, and initializing a new instance of the board with a specified size inside the constructor the sports on the board are initialized with values ranging from 0 to 3 each row contains the consecutive numbers method names as values at and this method takes an array list of integer as an input array list of integer as an input representing the indices of the spot on the board also it retrieves the values at the specified indices from the spot array list and returns them as an array list of the string okay. so this is how means like this is the one of the principle that we have covered as a single responsibility principle and if we look again into the bad which we can say bad directory and the bad code which is covering all the functionalities of the tic-tac-toe game so all this uh, tic-tac-toe functionality is covered in a single place page class and uh, as we can say in the good directory we have created a several several means like separate distinct separate functionality specific functionality classes on the basis of the functionality that they are going to perform so this is how we can achieve the single responsibility principle. So that was all for the demo as we are short, very short on time. Does anyone have any question?
Okay, so Aditya, I guess there are no queries uh, being uh, taken over here. So we are good to wrap up then. And uh, guys, if you are having any queries, uh, then I suggest you that you should at least reach out to Aditya later on teams with your queries, and uh, Aditya will be happy to answer those for you personally. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, with this, I'll also request you that we'll be rolling out the feedback form for this particular session. So I'll uh, request everyone that you should please go through the form and fill your uh, valuable feedbacks for this particular session. Also, we'll be rolling out the assessment form. At the end of the day, I would request you all to please take the assessment form and so that we can evaluate the session and the understanding that you have gone through. On this particular session. With this, thank you, Aditya, for delivering the session, and uh, thank you all the attendees for joining this session today. We hope that you have uh, carried along a good level of knowledge from the session that we have just taken. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Thank you. Yes. Yeah.